Ta-da! Good morning. I have, well, you saw, if you watched the last video, I do a healthy, uh, like a 2,000 RPM, two, two pounds of boost launch uh, up through into third, like 150, 170 mile an hour wheel speed. Uh, I've been thrashing it, and it's been doing good. It just had it on the dyno again last night. And it didn't make good power. It made good power, but not what I would expect. So it made pretty much the same from when the Bella was collapsed. It made better than that, but still, so it made, let's get to the point, seven pounds on wastegate made 503, so 500. And then I believe the next hit was around 15 pounds, made 731. And then, uh, on 21 pounds, it made 805. So that's a uh, diminishing returns there, in my opinion. It's fallen off. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, there's a bunch of things I'm going to mess with. One of them is that motor, that engine, electric people everywhere are triggered. It has L83 compatible like i think they're ls7 lifters because troy uh he had a cam put in his engine and then he had an, he swapped it to another cam so they did lifters twice so he had lifters with like 81 miles on them and they look exactly like ls7 and they measure out to the same now that engine stock has collapsible afm dod whatever you want to call it it has those but it's the same as the gen 4s it's four collapsible and four non-collapsible well since he had a cam like a 30 over pump cam it didn't have any of that so they were super low mileage all i had left was like brown stock ones which would have been fine other than uh this this whole engine and setup cost money so i was like well let's just put in these like there was also that was around the time when it was hard to get lifters and i was like well i have these 80 mile basically brand new oiled lifters and we were talking about it and we're thinking like maybe that's it so i think i'm gonna try uh i was talking to brian nutter at summit and i think i'm gonna try a one of their higher end lifters or a set of morels or we're gonna figure something out i'm gonna try that i really don't want to take the heads off and everything but uh, i gotta try it the other I, th I just feel like it should be making way more power. I've done simpler combos that are making over 800 on the same or less boost, like a 4.8 with a single 78.75 are doing the same thing. So that's, it's frustrating, but I just took the time to pound the thing and do burnouts and roll into it and everything else. And it was more fun to not think about uh, how much power it wasn't making and just thrash it so it's getting to that point the only issue is i have like a little coolant leak near one of my water neck an fittings that goes to my i might have said this already and then the other thing i had an oil leak that i could not find and it's doing that stuff where it's slinging it all over the front end again so it's getting on the belt and whatever and the timing cover is all oily and everything else so i found it the crank the front crank seal pushed out but like the center piece of it it didn't and i'm data logging crankcase pressure and it never went over it was at 21 pounds of boost it was 0.9 psi so that's nothing in the crankcase and what it did is it, it seemed to push out the soft center so you can like push it in and out like you can just move it like you can pull it into the balancer and shove it back into the engine and I'm like, okay, well, now I pull in the balancer and stuff on one of those on isn't bad, but that's annoying also. So just uh, just those two things. Everything else is doing really good. Uh, yeah, other than that, I'm stuck with... Uh, it's making less than I think it should. So I have to start uh, investigating some things. One thing that I want to do is I have the map sensor in just one side of the intake it would be interesting to put a second map sensor on the other side and see how they match up like maybe 
one turbo or the other is not moving air at all, which doesn't make sense to me because both oxygen sensors are showing a good air fuel. So I would figure if one whole cylinder was out, uh, I would have a pretty far off air fuel. And the only other judge we have of that is, uh, it's not misfiring, it sounds clean, it has a really clean dyno plot, uh, outstandingly clean dyno plot. Uh, what are the other things I was thinking of? Oh, my nose really itches, I'm sorry guys. Oh man, I'm now I'm blank. I felt my nose itching and now I'm blank. Man, what were we thinking was going on? Don't know. There's a lot of thoughts uh, about what's going on. The other thing is uh, back pressure is excellent. On 21 pounds, it had 15 pounds of back pressure. Uh, and uh, if you if you look at prior, it was uh, on 21 pounds previously, it was 64 pounds of back pressure. So it has... Uh, it is in a really good spot now, and it's even below one to one. That, that's fantastic. So it means the turbos aren't even working. The intercooler is doing fantastic. Uh, it has like on a bunch of long poles on the street. It had like 220 degree outlet temperatures, and it was ambient nearly going into the intake. I think it was like 71 outside, and my intake air temperature was 81. So that's fantastic. Also. Uh, my dial was working good. My CAN bus keypad, you can see when I launched the car, I'm using the, the CAN bus keypad that, uh, Pete Suntag built and the smart, uh, Boost Smart interface. So if you guys want to check that out, that's, uh, you can search for Boost Smart and it comes right up to his webpage. And that's a fantastic product. Uh, if you do a little bit of wiring on your own, it's only like 115 bucks to get started. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to ask him again. He said I could, but I'm going to make a harness that goes from his whole harness setup into my plug and play stuff. So if you have my stuff and you want to offload inboard uh, sensors, inputs, you can move them over to this board and use more of your localized inputs for like boost control and traction control and whatnot because the CAN bus ones are slightly slower and if you have really fast acting things like boost control and whatnot you're going to want to use the direct outputs so that's it there's a lot going through my brain uh like what is it and then part of me's like just drive it for now and figure it out later i definitely want to get some street tires for the front uh i hate skinnies it looks cool absolutely and it's kind of all i have but I definitely got a, I was looking on Marketplace, it's cancer, uh, nobody ever gets back to you, it's terrible, I'm sure all of you feel the same, but I'd like to just get like GT500 repli replicas, like a 08 to 2010 GT500, something like that, something like that's not ricer and not torque thrusts boomer, and yeah, so those are my thoughts on all that, I figured I would update you guys. Uh, what's really cool is Tom came over here the my fab guy my friend and we jumped in and drove it to the dyno and i made like three or four hits i did wastegate like i said like one bar about 15 pounds and then 21 and it was it was making 800 and i'm like that's cool that's awesome that's an eight second car super easy but i uh all that money's in there to make more so there's something going on uh, Brian and Matt think it may be the lifters, so we're going to check out a, a bunch of things. Uh, yeah, other than that, I'm not sure. Uh, people that are smarter than me need to come into it, or all of my jokes came true that I spent a ton of money and time, and uh, power isn't there, and it's been eating my lunch, so it, it's definitely frustrating. Uh, but what's nice is starts, runs, drives, and does burnouts, and I drove it like... Oh man, I drove it like over two hours uh, when we put it on the dyno, stop and go traffic, cruising on the roads, uh, no highways, and my ch I changed my transmission cooler to a true cool in the front end instead of the fan one in the back, and after all of that thrashing it, I think it only went to 167 degrees, 
And then as soon as we hit any kind of cruise and lockup, it went right back down. So really happy with moving that. There's no leaks from that. Uh, what else? What else? My fuel pressure is good. My pumps are working. Let's just highlight some positives, right? My fuel pumps are good. My injector duty cycle is only like 42% at 800 wheel on 78% alcohol. Uh, yeah, a lot of it's doing pretty good. A lot of small stuff. Uh, big with the power. I, I don't know. Part of me is like, just keeps like put 36 pounds through it and see, see what it makes. But that's the uh, the idea behind uh, expensive cylinder heads and like that crazy double intake is to not uh, to make more power on less boost. And I'm at a point where I'm like, might as well be a stock 4.8. It's disheartening for sure. But I wanted to share all that. Other than that, it doesn't smoke a drop. It runs great. Blah, blah, blah. So if any of you have information on those l83 lifters if i made a big oops there uh some of you might say that the push rods might not be the right length matt my engine builder matt another matt he came down here and personally measured the push rods himself with all of his tools and summit provided me they were 840s so they're an inch the cylinder heads are basically an inch taller than a stock push rod so all of that is set up uh, i'd like to hear what maybe you guys think theories I went over a bunch of it now, but uh, again, maybe someone's run into it. I know uh, I asked, just for fun, I asked Joe Simpson, a Tempest Motorsports, and I'm like, man, I'll send you logs and stuff, but uh, I know people will be like, just add boost, but that's, no, I have so many other setups to crack 800 that are simpler with one turbo and stock cylinder heads, plastic stock Gen 3 truck intake. Uh, making eight plus on 17 pounds. Uh, yeah, so what's cool is my back pressure and stuff is amazing. It shows that everything isn't working hard again, but it just ain't coming out to the tires. So I'll be working on that. Other than that, uh, not much else going on with it other than fixing all the BS. So let me know what you guys think about the uh, power issue or if there's any ideas I can chase. Oh, for the first time in my life, I, I paid to have someone groom me. How you like that? Oh, yeah. Jamie's like, go get a haircut or you're not allowed home. Uh, I was looking pretty homeless. And now, as the weather gets colder, I just let everything grow even more. Uh, people who have a beard can sympathize where uh, cold air starts blowing around on winter days. And the beard and the hair is a big protection so when you, whenever I cut my beard or my hair, when it's colder out, it's like, whew, I feel like ice cubes are dragging across my ears and my head and my face. And I'm like, oh, this is so disgusting feeling. You never feel the air uh, in that area. So that's some wonderful information for you at the end there. Uh, yeah, well, I'll quit there. What are we at? 13 minutes of babbling. Uh, awesome if you want to listen to all that. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, yeah, we'll get there, or we won't. See you later, bye.